Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. So your name is Gunter Loibel? Yep. I, I pronounced it correctly? Perfect. Wow. Okay. That's a good start. <laughs> That's a good start. Okay. Now, so, um, and, and you were with Rebeat. You're the CEO of Rebeat. Yeah. And my understanding uh, of what you're doing is you are proposing that lacquers be cut with a laser as opposed to being cut on a lathe with a standard coil and uh, cutting stylus. What we what we are doing or what we try to do is um, let's let's let let me begin from the start. It happened already two years ago when you have to know that mainly we are a digital music distributor. So I won't hold that against you. <laughs> well, that was in this case it was an, an advantage because it 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 happened that um, we try to integrate a lot of different businesses from our music labels into our what we call music enterprise software. So this is a software where they can do digital distribution, artist accounting, um, all all kind of mechanical um, accounting, and all these kind of things. And we thought about integrate the vinyl business into our MES. Then we we it, it turned out that there were unbelievable high shipment times, shipment delays on on vinyl. And so we thought, this what's going on there? We know we knew that vinyl was booming. Um, Hi, okay. <laughs> okay, we have to interrupt. Sorry, so, sorry, no sorry, sorry, but it's okay. there was a traffic on the on the main road, yeah, uh, to be Sure, end. that's what they all say. <laughs> and I was late. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. And I was late. Okay. Okay. So to continue, um, and we found out that the biggest problem was the cutting process. You had just a, a, a limited number of working lathes, lathes um, around the globe, and to add up even more problems, there were just a few people, in most cases very old people, who were able to operate these machines. And that was the main reason why um, all the, the pressing plants are working on their capacity limit. Well, I would say, in all honesty, the biggest bottleneck is that there haven't been enough presses I, I don't think that the presses were, have been the big or had been the big the big problem in the past. Presses were always always things that you can easily um, buy if you want if, if if you need if you need additional presses you can easy, easily buy one. Okay, well this we'll agree to disagree on that, but that's that's okay. In, in any case, anyway, so we had the I had the idea why not um, use a laser to create the stamper because. A uh, laser is the most precise tool. That so you're is saying to create the stamper itself, not to create the lacquer. No. You wouldn't cut a lacquer. You no. cut into a metal part, and but you create it now to create a stamper. A stamper is ridges, not valleys. So how would you? You would not be creating a stamper. Yes, you, we are creating a stamper. So you would create ridges. You would do, yeah. be the inverse. You'd be cutting in between. The positive or the negative, however you call it. Yeah. So you can cut a positive. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's, that would be. That has a lot of advantages. The first advantage is you don't need chemicals anymore. Yeah. So all these toxic wastes sure. isn't there. Second advantage, you don't have chemical copies. So on every chemical copy, you lose it just a little bit, but you lose. Yes. Um, additionally, we have the advantage that. We don't need to cut high frequencies because there is no stylus head which could overheat on the laser system, um, and we can um, completely remove the angle error because the cutting process is done tangentially, and 99% of the turntables are reading in a radial angle, and that is being removed as well. So, what so well, so when records are cut on the lathe, it's tangential, and so you're saying that you would cut on an arc so that it would be better. Exactly. So what would happen if you have a tangential tracking tone on? You're out of Then luck. you are one of the 2% who have a disadvantage, a slight disadvantage okay. in that case. I'm, I'm in favor of serving the majority. I'm very uh, egalitarian in that sense. So that we could do both. We could create a stamper for tangential players and a stamper for radial players. Wouldn't that, that would be... be it's just an, an extra skew, but that's okay. That, that's interesting. <laughs> Okay. Now you have to imagine the technical process works like this. We take a high-resolution audio file, 
and we transfer this audio file um, into a 3D topographical model of the stamper. Right. And due to the fact that we know the deflection of the amplitude at any time, we can um, remove the gaps in between or remove it as, as much as possible. So that means um, we will be able to to create 30% uh, 30 longer playing time or 30% bigger amplitudes, which makes the signal much better. Wow. But you have to work from a digital source. 95% of all the cuttings right now are done from a digital source, mm -hmm. even in the vinyl business. Yeah, I'm not just quite sure it's that, that high, but, but it, it, you know, it's, it's up there. And so you could work from a 192 24-bit file or a DSD take, file. You can take... The input is, is, is but just... could you cut from analog tape? Could you cut from a tape? From it. Yes, but we had to transfer it into a digital signal. Yeah. Okay, so it has to be a digital signal. Yeah. Okay, because the computer is creating that three D model of the stamper. <coughs> right. Then we we remove as much as possible the gaps or uh, um, yeah. extend the, the the amplitudes. Then we correct the angle error. And um, another advantage of a laser is that we can cut any virtual any material you would like to cut. So we don't have to to use nickel. Because on a traditional process, you have the situation that nickel, the first copy is different than, let's say, the the five, the copy number five hundred on the nickel stamp. Right. With a quality difference, and this quality difference we can completely remove by using better, harder materials, and also the life cycle of a of a nickel stamper is in the best ways. 2,000 copies. At the best, yes, thousand is a good place. And to ours start. will be ours will start at ten thousand. Copies. Really? Yeah. Now, what what would be the most useful or commonly used material? To we have a lot of candidates. We are not we not decide. We did we have not made a decision yet which material we'll use. This will be will will make the decision in the industrialization process. So when we transfer it from the laboratory to the um, um, factory, but all the candidates we have are much harder and also chemical more stable than nickel. Uh, and with these, these, uh, so you would actually cut the stamper, you cut it, and then it goes right on the press. Yeah. And so these would be configurable to whatever tooling each press needs. This is this is the idea. This is we don't have that step now done. Um, this will come. This will start, I think, by the end of this year. But yes, this is. So the plan. you would just need to know what. Uh, what a Tulix Alpha Press would require. You need to know what a, a we quite SMT we quite press. know it, but it depends also on the material we use because um, it makes a difference if we use a ceramic material or if we use a, a stainless steel or whatever. Yeah. In, um, so you think you could you could you could produce a ceramic stamper? Well, we could, the laser can do everything. Uh, yeah, but can, can you can it take the high pressure? Of course. Sure. Well, I don't know. So well, there is, depending there is also, on you for that information. There is, there is also the possibility you can also use polymer materials, ah. plastics. So there, the, the, the science of materials is quite more ahead than it had been um, eight so years ago. So how far along in this process have you gotten in the physical world beyond the, the what we, conceptual? What we, what we have right now is we have done all the feasibility tests. Um, so we um, exactly know, we now know that it's possible, we know which kind of laser equipment we need, we know which kind of optical um, equipment we need, we also exactly know which kind of um, um, stages we need, because it's, it's, it's one of the um, most difficult parts to synchronize all that things together. Um, we know that we can create those nanostructures which are possible to uh, write frequencies up to 100 kilohertz. I can hear that high. <laughs> well, <laughs> now what? Um, I'm just kidding. That's I'm a kidder. So, as far as cost structure, have you estimated the cost structure involved? So, let's say to produce a stamper, that the costs will be definitely higher than in the traditional way. Yeah. So there will be approximately our estimation right now. It's it's difficult to say because it depends on the material we yeah. choose, but. Um, I would say it will be around. The target is that it should not, it should not be more expensive than thousand euros or thousand dollars. But then you can make an unlimited number of. Uh, well, of I, it will. We don't know yet if it's unlimited, but uh, we know that at least it should be ten thousand. And on these ten thousand copies, you can have. You will see no difference between yeah. the first and the last copy. 
And that's, you know, a, a lot of these uh, records are being cut for bands that produce 1,000, 500. So to be able to produce 10,000 would be, for the big, for the big releases, would be yeah. tremendous. Yeah. So how, so you need funding at this point or you have um, clients going to write you a check? No. Well, you're going to write him a check to get this going? <laughs> Whether you believe it or not, we are, um, I'm now, um, it, the funding process was a little bit difficult because we had partners at the beginning and it turned out that we, we disagreed with certain terms of how we would work together. Yeah. And I had to start again uh, to restart the whole process uh, by the end of last year. And now I'm in the, how to say, in the short before the finish line talking with two possible investors so there will be a decision between um, um, an old friend of mine who is billionaire who wants to fund it and um, um, let's, let's, let's trade the billionaire ship. That's the way to do it. And so one, one question, yeah. you know when records are cut now on a regular lathe, there's a stylus rake angle, uh, most cutting styluses are, it has to be beyond 90 degrees for the cutting stylus because it's got to extract the, the thread of lacquer that's just been cut. Mm -hmm. But with your process, we can you can do whatever. We can do what we can do whatever we want, and yeah. I will show you something. Okay, can which I put, put this on, on? You might like. Um, I probably would. Um, just have to find the the presentation I need. So. Of course, this is this is quite easy to understand. We take we take the, the for you file. for you it's easy to understand. Keep in mind we create that three D model of the of the waveforms. Then we optimize. The okay, 3D. so that's so I want to get close. So this is the file. That's the, 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 the waveform of the file. This is your. Th this is how the three D um, topographic model will look under the microscope. It's this is just an, a, a rendering. Okay, that doesn't look like anything like a record group. Okay, and then you'd get... So, schematically you can see that this is a traditional vinyl and due to the fact that we know the deflection of the amplitude at any time, we can put the grooves tight together without um, having okay. the, have the problem. But again, this is, a, this is a, you know, either a negative or a positive. That that's a grooved thing you're creating, whereas a stamper has to be a ridged thing. So how does that work? It's just the laser doesn't care. The laser just removes, vaporizes material. So you're saying you can do the opposite. You, you, you know, but you you'd have to show me a conceptualization of the opposite of that for me to really understand. Okay, in this case, it's 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 a, the, the 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 vinyl. That's the reason why it is black. And the stamp. Okay, yes, so you're saying when it's, when it's pressed, that's what you're gonna yeah, see. Exactly. And you can get much closer together because yeah. you. Okay. All right. It's just I mean, to see what what the result will be. Okay, so you can have long, but, long -run records without having to worry about. Yeah. Uh, compression or, or uh, grooves touching each other? Longer records or what we would prefer is to extend the amplitude because that will produce a much better signal noise right. ratio. I got you. And you can also cut further, you can keep it further out from the center where, where you, yeah. in a normal situation, you lose the, 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 the waveforms that get scrunched up as, as the radius gets smaller. Yeah, well, the, 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 the physical limitation you have on, on our system as well. So yeah. um, we will not be able to write the 100 kilohertz uh, on the inner side. That's okay. Honest. I don't think we need 100 kilohertz. It's not, not a problem. This is the, this is the, the, the limit which we um, um, found for ourselves. It's because a lot of audio media um, is working with that limit as well. But here is an even more interesting thing and this will affect the audio quality much better or much more. On a traditional vinyl you have the problem that the groove, sh the shape of the groove changes. In most, the, 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 the thing which is most responsible for that is the wear of the nickel stamper. So that means um, at the beginning the groove is on the first cut the groove is very sharp and on the last copy the groove is um, the, the, you have a lot of rounds there. That's the reason why all the needle manufacturers need to create crazy shapes of the needle to fit in all those different shapes of grooves. And in, in, in the reality you have just two very small points where the needle really touches the groove. When you take a look under the microscope 
you will see that there are just, uh, just two small points where the needle really touches the vinyl. What we can do is, what you can see here is, we can create the perfect groove. So that means from the first, from the outside to the inside, and no matter how many copies you do, you have one shape. And we even, re due to the fact that we remove that angle error, we also remove the tilt of the needle. So that means for the first time you can have a needle which really has a, a in comparison, a huge surface touching the, uh, a, 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 a huge area which touches the surface, the surface much bigger than on traditional vinyl. So that means even if we apply higher weights on the needle, the wear of the vinyl will be much less than on traditional systems. And um, this also increases, um, how to say in English, <laughs> um, the movement of the needle in this place is much more precise than it is on traditional vinyl. But you're still keeping to the Westrex 45-45 systems. So that it is still 100% compatible with every existing turntable. Okay. The only th the only thing which you will not have if you have an, an, an old needle, a traditional needle, you can play back uh, our vinyls perfectly. You will also benefit of the uh, a longer playing time or higher amplitude, um, but you will not benefit of the let's say the last five, six, or ten percent of the audio quality. But you will you will have the same quality than you have on traditional. Yeah, I mean, realistically speaking, most people will have a collection of traditional records and a smaller collection of this kind of cuts. So they're going to be using a regular stylus anyway. So, yeah. At least for the next yep. twenty or thirty years, till well forever, because people just really I don't have a problem. And if somebody, oh, yeah. it, it it works. The, it key, is, the key is going to be how good it sounds with a traditional stylus. That's, that's going to be. You will definitely hear a difference between the vinyl, HD vinyl and traditional vinyl, even on a traditional stylus. So, of course, the ideal comparison would be a record cut the standard way, and a record cut this way from the same source. Yes. And then, if you're starting with it with an analog tape, you'd want to hear a cut from analog tape cut traditionally and then analog tape converted to 192.24 bit or DSD or whatever and then cut this way and then compare it. That would be interesting. You, okay. you can be sure that this that uh, once we are ready with the machine exactly that will will happen. And so you're saying that you can cut ridges, not grooves. Yep. Okay. Is is this do you have anything else on here to show me or is that it? Well and that's pretty cool. That's, I mean. that's you have this was a presentation I did for the um, MediaTek guys. So here is a small comparison of the of the parameters. Um, Twenty to one hundred k playing time is seventy minutes per for both sides. Thirty five minutes a side. Yeah, like ten thousand per stamper. Uh, uh, well. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> and how how soon do you think you might be able to actually need funding first? Um, the, when everything goes well with the funding, which should be clear by next week, hopefully. Next week. Next week, yeah. Oh, so let's well. let's take it to this point. So you get funded. It looks like it, there is nothing signed yet. Okay, let's say you get the deal. You got the money. Okay. What's your next step? Next step is that we will order the very expensive laser equipment. Um, this will take another three months until we have it in place. Um, then we will start cutting the first um, stampers. The first stampers will not contain any kind of um, complex audio material. Right. It will mostly be just sinus curves or just for, for, for Test, taking the stamper records. to the to the pressing plant. Yeah. And um, do the first. And uh, you pick a pressing plant and find out what their needs are, like optimal or, or well, cheesy or or. Yeah, it will be it will be cheesy yeah. in in our case because they they are um, geographically the nearest right. pressing plants. And then you'd start with simple test record to see what came exactly. out. Exactly. So so if you get funded, you're saying within a year you might actually be able to have a record. The, if there are no unexpected obstacles, bigger. At this point, you're you're still operating from the th on the theoretical side. No, of no, this. we already have samples, oh. um, just on a small size, right. um, where we um, just found out how far we could go with the uh, miniaturization of the structures. 
So you have to imagine that 21 to write 100k, okay, if you need them or not, that's, that's a second question, but yeah. um, how small those structures need to be and um, they need to be in the nanometer um, segment. So really, really, very, very small. And so the first research and development um, work was to find out what equipment do we need and how far could we go with that. This was the basic work was finished two months ago, was very positive. And the next step is that we really create with it with that knowledge a big one. And of course, you're, you have to run this through the RIAA curve. Yep. You could do it in the digital domain since you're there already, yep. you make it very precise. Yeah. It will also sooner or later completely revolutionize the, um, the mastering process because um, in the first year, um, there will be only the only way to master it will be on our side, technically. And um, I have to be very honest, at the, the first machines, so we will build two machines, one for Europe, one for the US. Um, and we have a very limited capacity at the first year because the, to create those nanostructures needs a lot of time. So um, our estimated time we need for one stamper site will be 12 hours. Ah. So that means we can make one stamper set a day two machines we will have will be able to create around 700 stampers in the first year yeah. so there's very limited so it's, it's limited special edition to the, exactly to the, the um, best sounding while we already start to introduce a product in the market we continue research and development to accelerate that um, that the speed so it we think that we will be able to um, accelerate it by four times or eight times within one year right so it should be we should be able to um, fulfill the demand, um, um, the expected demand after that, that first year. Um, Yo, yeah, um, that's the plan. Well, that's very fascinating. And uh, so I hope you'll, you'll keep me in the loop. I will tell my readers. And, if you and provide me your business card, I will be able to keep you I in the loop. I refuse, absolutely not. I'm, very, I'm so exclusive, I don't give all my business card. But I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll write the information. I think the credit card as well. I no. will laser cut it for you. I have a little laser. Okay. All right, we're good. Thank you so much. Well.